Welcome everybody. Um, this is our sixth grade presentation for our back to school night for 2021, 2022. We're glad that you could join us. We have some information for you to share, but first we're gonna do some teacher introductions. Hi, I'm Mrs. Howard, and this is my second year here at Lincoln. Um, hi, I'm Mr. Magos, and this is my 28th year here at Lincoln. Hi, I'm Mrs. Newbert, and this is my 23rd year here at Lincoln. Hi, this is Mr. Smith, and I think this is my 14th year here at Lincoln. So we have some information to share with you. We're going to get started on that. But first, we want you to see this quote, because this is one of our things that we truly believe in. It says, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. And the reason we really uh, use that one is because we want to involve your students in their learning. So we're not going to just be talking at them, but we're gonna be talking with them and getting them to be getting involved in all of the things that they're learning. So they might be doing a lot more activities than they might be used to in other grade levels, but that's how we look at it in sixth grade to get them involved. Now, here are the things you're gonna get involved with. All right, so I'm going to begin with our first curriculum topic, which is in language arts. The first one uh, to discuss is our reading uh, in literature and informational text. So the big one that we all truly focus on is for the students to be able to cite textual evidence. We're also going to be focusing on theme and central idea describing how plots unfold and how characters develop throughout a story using lots of rich uh, literature with novels um, that kind of span across lots of genres and some even tie into what we learn in social science. Um, that goes hand in hand with our writing. So our focus in sixth grade is uh, the three major writing topics are argumentative, um, explanatory or informative, and also their narrative response. Okay, the next section we're going to visit is social studies. And here at Lincoln, we um, pride ourselves on doing a living history. Um, there are some main areas that we cover, which would be Mesopotamia, the Egyptians, um, and that happens in the first part of the school year. And following Christmas break, we cover Greece and Rome and then the Israelites, uh, time permitting. And then also in science, you're gonna see that there are four uh, main areas with our time constraints. And now that we have STEM, we will probably only cover two of these and it would be the biotech systems, um, and the red list. So these are some of the ways that we cover our curriculum. If you want to look at the blue bubbles that just popped up. Next, we'll look at mathematics. Here at Lincoln, we go for more bang for the buck. So we do not go in order of the book. We will start off with ratio and rates, fractions and decimals. Then we'll go jump into algebraic expressions. Then we'll look at equations and inequalities, and then integers and the coordinate planes. Also, we will look at other things, time permitting, and front load some of these with um, Khan Academy and Prodigy. We'll look at numeric, numerical expressions and factors area of polygons, statistical measures, and data displays. Now, as Mrs. Newbert mentioned, we do a lot and we pride ourselves on our studies of history through the cultures. And one of the main ones that you probably have heard about if you have been here at Lincoln is our Egyptian character project where the kids will bring a, a character from ancient Egypt to life. Uh, through performance and preparing speeches. Um, all of our classes will be participating in that in some fashion through um, presentations and video. 
other areas that we also look at, we have Greek projects. And one of those that we have done in the last few years is doing posters of the gods and learning all the factual information about those gods. And then a fun one we do for Rome is we actually create a, a geometric design using the idea of Roman mosaics. And we use that with a combination of different colors of uh, beans. So it's kind of a fun one at the end of the year for the kids to get involved with. Now, part of our activities as well are our field trips. We'll go over those in a little bit. Um, they are being scheduled. The dates are still being determined and the likelihood that we're going on these. But the other big one is going to be a uh, sixth grade camp. We do have dates for that. We have been uh, given the permission to go forward on it, um, all things being permitted. One of the things that we wanted to tell you ahead of time was about the possibility of volunteers and chaperones, parents going as our volunteers to sixth grade camp or any of the field trips. One of the first requirements that has been in place for quite a while is that all volunteer chaperones must be fingerprinted. Now, the nice thing is if you've been fingerprinted anytime already here at Lincoln in past years with your students, your fingerprints should just already still be valid. What we would need you to do is fill out the yearly volunteer form and that can be um, gotten from the, uh, the office staff. With the current situation, uh, we are still checking to see whether or not it's going to be a requirement for all volunteer chaperones to be vaccinated as well. At the moment, we are still following and looking for some guidance on that. So as soon as we find out, we will be sharing that with you as well. We just wanted to make you aware of that ahead of time with the ideas of these activities still moving forward because we wanna bring that sixth grade fun to this school year. Now, some of those events that we do know, some of the dates, um, we have a partnership with the San Joaquin River Project and this is a sponsor trips by our district. These are no cost to the, the parents because these are being sponsored by the district. So we have three events that happen along the river. One of them is in class and two are on site. The dates are there as called one in November, one in uh, February. The one to Sycamore Island is a really fun one because that's their opportunity that they will get to do uh, canoeing out on the calm pond. Um, there's a little bit of permission slips on as that one as well extra for that one. And we will be giving you more of the details as we get closer to these events happening. Now, our major curriculum trip is usually to Hearst Castle. We usually schedule that sometime mid-February. That one is a cost to each of the students of $60. That one is what we do our flat rate donation for. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is we won't probably be asking for those funds anywhere until January. However, it is important that we also make it clear that um, with the funding for that trip, we have to be able to fund the entire trip for all students or the trip will be canceled if we don't have enough funds to make that happen. So it's kind of an all or nothing deal. Um, because we need to make sure that all four classes are covered so that everybody gets that experience. Now for camp, we are going to Calvin Crest. That's where we've gone all the past years. We are scheduled for the week of May 9th through the 13th. So that's a, from leaving on a Monday and going all the way till Friday. Friday, we would be back here at school um, around noon. The cost for each of those students is $275 and that covers all their expenses as far as room and board, their meals, and then their transportation um, up to camp and back from camp. Now to help with that, one of our other big events that will be happening soon is our Jogathon. That schedules for September 24th. More details about the Jogathon will be coming um, at a later time. But one of the things to keep in consideration is that for sixth graders, all of the funds that they raise in their jogathon go directly towards their camp account. So if they raise $25, if they raise $50, if they raise $100 or more, that amount is already deducted 100% off of the $275 to camp. 
So we really try to um, encourage you to help out with the jogathon, especially for the sixth graders, because it will also help them go to camp. Now, we do have a carnival that is tentatively scheduled for October 15th. We are still not sure about that one since that's a community event. But if we do get to have that happen, one of the nice things about that is the funds for that one go back to each of our individual classrooms where it helps with all the activities that we kind of have talked about we want to share and do. And if the carnival doesn't happen, that's when it kind of goes back on the teachers where they don't have as much funding to do some of the events that there. So we're hoping that the carnival happens. We just have to see what's going to be happening as the year progresses. Now, one of the other areas that we wanted to mention very quickly was about Block L. Now, most of your sixth graders had the opportunity in fourth grade to participate if they chose to. Um, what we're looking for with Block L is the well-rounded student, awarding that recognition to those students. Um, it is student-driven, so we, we look to the students to handle a lot of this with parent support and, of course, with faculty support. We focus on the three main areas of academics, athletics, and service to both school and community. There are a point system where they would earn the award, but most of this is going to be explained later on. I will have a separate meeting for all interested parents and students um, online sometime mid-September. So please look out for another notice from me that I'll be having another Zoom session just solely about Block L to help explain this to not just our sixth graders, but to our fourth and fifth graders as well. All right, moving on to the workload. Uh, so this has to do with their assignments that they take home to work on, and most are due the following day. Homework is, our expectation is that it should always be attempted. Um, all work is logged in their agendas daily. So we all, all of us teachers here, we take a little bit of time every single day for students to write down what they need to complete um, in the afternoon and evening to bring back the next day. And then we're gonna take a look at something that's important, a website that's available for home use. And we're gonna click right here to open that up. All right, so your two uh, main websites that you're gonna wanna be very familiar with and um, visit on occasion are going to be Clever. Um, Clever, your child will actually be visiting on a daily basis um, all of their activities that we do in class as well as their textbooks um, that they'll be able to use online um, materials that they might need to have when they're home not in class um, they have access to everything that we're doing in class basically if it's through clever um, as well as uh, parents, you have an opportunity to check grades through ARIES. There is also an ARIES link in Clever. Um, Google Classroom is also a lifeline um, because this is where your child's teacher will be assigning um, the workload as well as due dates. Um, you'll be able to check and see if your child has completed their work that, you know, if you're, if you're um, requiring them to do that. Um, it's a real quick check for them as well as remembering what things that they need to do and due dates pop up and all that good stuff for those extended um, assignments that they might have. But these two uh, places um, on their Chromebooks are gonna be very, very important. And also part of the workload, seeing as the kids are um, able to use Clever and get into Google Classroom, they are to take their Chromebooks home with them every single evening and return them the following day. So it's very important that the kids remember to charge their computers nightly to be prepared and ready to go for their school day. All right, next we'll look at classroom discipline. We plan on work, working off students' strengths, actively inspire positive growth, live the expectation, 
and using the three simplest words, respect, responsibility, and ready. And we always say it, rules rule, the Lincoln way. Now parents, ways that you can help us out are very important. Um, emailing us, you can email us or even more so now so with the new system, Parent Square. Please use Parent Square, contact us with any of your concerns, your questions. It is the lifeline lately for getting hold of us. But also please make sure you review their agendas with them. The students should be coming home and letting you know what it is. In sixth grade, they need to be actively um, letting you know what they need to get done that night, but it is there in their agenda. And we are gonna ask for your signatures just as a mere formality so that we can know that they've had that conversation with you and that you are aware of it. Because a lot of times it's that communication part that we find is the problem. Now, other ways that you can help us, especially with um, the activities that we want to do this year is through funding. So that flat rate donation, that is our only means to get us to Hearst Castle. So when those come out, it would really benefit us if you pay attention to that and know that that is our means to take them to take, which is a great trip to go to Hearst Castle. And then with camp, our two big ones are going to be the Jogathon because we said that's 100%. What they raise, 100% of it goes towards their camp cost of $275. And then in January, we started candy sale. Everything being permitted, hopefully that will still be happening. But with our candy sale, that's a 50-50 split. And so they can make up the rest of their funds that they need in order to get to camp. Some kids have raised enough money to pay for the entire trip, plus, raising extra to either help out other kids in need or to pay for the chaperones that we take. Every year we take about uh, 15 to 20 chaperones just to help us get through a week of camp. And we don't require that the uh, parents pay the cost for camp. We raise that fund. So through that candy sale, we really kind of push those kids who are really good hustlers to, to sell that they will uh, be able to raise extra funds that we can um, still do that. One of the ways that you can really help out is to get involved with our parent club, being a representative, helping us out on those activities when we can, coming to the meeting so that you can be aware of what it is and how much our parent club does for all of the school and especially to give their sixth grade students that, that final year of fun. So, all of this, we wanna really make sure that your student survival is looking at their accountability and responsibility. This is kind of like their final year to get prepared for what's gonna happen with the middle school. We know what's going to um, be involved with them there, a, little, a lot more independence on their part. So we are gonna really push them to look at that accountability and responsibility so that they can be successful next year. So we hope this helped you with some of the basic information as far as what's gonna happen for the sixth grade year. We wanna thank you for listening to us. And right after this, we are going to be having our individual Q and A's. If there was anything that we talked about that you still had questions on, if there was something that we didn't mention that you would like more information on, you're gonna have that opportunity in a little bit. But we all want to thank you for being here and hope this was very helpful to you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, guys.